Len? Yeah, I'm talking, yeah. Yes, hi, sorry, I was leaving you a message and then you called and I tried to pick up and I guess it didn't work. Um, I got your message this morning. What's this all about? Uh, I have posted a video on YouTube. Yeah, no, I know the video. I know, I know what you're referring to. I just don't understand the phone call. First of all, you don't even leave a number for me to call you back. You just kind of leave this, basically, hey, you know, I'm the guy who got you the fridge. Your son has to remove this video. Like, we don't work with intimidation or threats. We do talk. I'm going to answer your question. It's not intimidation. That's my way of, uh, you might not. Who the heck I am? It's nothing to do with whether I got you a fridge. It's just to remind you, you might not know who Len was, so I just, you know, I happened to make a contribution. That has no relevance to anything. That's just letting you know that, uh, you know, we know each other from the past. My concern is that I've seen, I've seen that video, and my concern, Sophie, with that, it's not intimidation, it's, it's letting you know that from a security standpoint and the welfare of individuals, I don't know much about what was going on. I don't know a lot about the specifics, but it appears to be uh, as far as I can tell, it's uh, animal rights activists doing some kind of investigation into uh, abusive conditions. Well, that's and, the thing. And that, just, 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 to finish my, just to finish my sentence, and that's been put out there with, with people's names attached to it. And that, whatever Rick thinks of Jesus or whatever is going on there, that should never, ever be put on YouTube, an animal rights investigation and names of people, regardless of what he thinks of those people or what they're doing. I mean, I don't know, I don't know the specifics, but that, that's very alarming. That, that could jeopardize those people because the law frowns upon people, any animal rights activists doing any of that, those types of investigations for animals under cover. They appear to be under cover, you know? So, so I'm asking you, if you can please ask Rick, to remove that one, that one video because... Okay, well, that's it. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of videos. So I'm assuming you're referring to the one of Nicole and Sue stealing the calf from the hay dealer's brother. Is that the video you're talking about? That setup where they water down the, the pen so these cow, calves would be in mud and then they took a video to try and pretend that it was uh, horrendous conditions and they got busted? and had to return the calves, and uh, you see Sue untying one of the calves from a barn that is absolutely wonderful conditions as far as what I've seen from the standards of the industry. That does not mean I agree with the, with the farming. Don't get me wrong. Whether I agree morally or not, on a legal standpoint, this farm is top of the line. From the pictures and the video I saw, there is no reason to liberate a calf from there this calf does not need liberation. And uh, on the other hand, on the other hand... That needs liberation to respond to your, your point. Uh, you know, whatever people think of Nicole or Jesus... Well, did you I, see the other... No, I'm going to respond to your point. I'm going to respond to your point. I, you know, uh, I consider you to be a credible person. I believe that if you tell me you witnessed something... I believe it. I also believe them. Uh, they told me that they witnessed horrific conditions of animals knee deep in uh, filth and bone manure. And they say that video was edited to remove conditions that were present. I, I know them to be trustworthy like I know you to be trustworthy. And so I don't know what's going on here. It's, it seems like there's an agenda uh, that involves teachers and, and doesn't involve this incident. They are trustworthy investigators, and this is, you know, this could, this really could compromise people. And I think the dispute should be kept to teachers' conditions and not start getting out into uh, vendettas, because this is really a vendetta against two activists that no, no, no. It's not a vendetta. What I don't, I don't deal in vendettas. Okay. What I do is I started rescuing animals, dogs in particular, in '96. Over the years of rescuing, I have met many people. One of which being Nicole, who I admired for years. Uh, over the last two or three years. I have come to realize, because it's one thing to hear and see on paper, 
It's a whole other thing to see for yourself. So in the last two years, uh, my son has been approached by many people because he is very good on the computer and he's not that involved in my dog rescue. They've approached him to investigate cat hoarding situations. During this, this is why I'm taking a sabbatical. As these names were popping up that he was trying to investigate, these were names that I, I heard again and again and again over the last 18 years and always the same situation. No money, we have too many animals, they're dying, they're sick, can you help us? We need to move, we're over the law, MAPAC wants to seize, SPC wants to seize, the animals are going to be killed, please, please, please help. So over the years, you know, I helped, I did what I could, and then I came to realize everybody had the same story. It was always a zoning change, it was always the same thing, and so I started digging into that, calling cities, finding out, and I found out that all these people who were victims of the system were all hoarders, hoarders whose houses had to be burned, hoarders who were evicted from their towns, hoarders whose conditions were so horrendous, it's pathetic that it was kept undercover. So I've decided to, ex my son has decided to expose. Now through this exposure, Nicole's name has come up mainly because I saw the barn at Tejas. Before I sent the Huskies there in, in 2011, I had been to Tejas, and I did feel that she needed help. She needed, you know, some obviously some funding, some labor, some volunteers. I felt bad. I thought this is not, you know, according to MAPAC, this, her place did not pass the MAPAC standards. But I realized she was an older lady who was alone and who needed help. The two years, three years have now gone by, and things got worse and worse. For one, she refused to return the two huskies that she was supposed to keep for the weekend. So I started realizing there was an issue there. She was afraid they would end up with mushers. Nicole has known me for years. She knows how tough I am as far as screening. She didn't trust herself to place those dogs, and she did not want to send them back to me. So I started having issues with her, asking her to return my calls. She refused. And then I kind of, I saw this whole war between Tejas and Rose and Rose and Tejas. I've known Nicole for years. When I first met Nicole, I met her through Rose. I met Rose and Nicole was her best friend. And over the years, Rose was a, a horrible woman. Nicole was a horrible woman. Then the two were buddies again. They're women. I don't like women. There's a reason why, because women have cat fights all the time. So can I ask you, how does this relate because these two videos, no, 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 it's not separate. Listen, listen to me. Let, let me finish, and you'll see how it's not separate. The videos that have been uploaded, the first videos that Rick got his hands on that were uploaded were videos of Nicole's place, Nicole's house, Nicole's property, and Nicole's animals. Okay, okay. they are absolutely horrendous. There is no logical person with any morals who would think that this is acceptable. So right there, I have a problem with Nicole letting it get out of control to that extreme. Now, the, these videos were shocking and needed to be exposed. This other video Rick, Rick got his hands on showing Nicole and Sue Manns getting out there to steal this calf after they li literally flooded the area to make it look like the, these calves were living in horrendous conditions okay, in I'm minus 30. And then ask you, and ask you how, uh, how did you verify that they flooded the area to make it look bad? How do you confirm that? There's many ways to con I mean, you cannot confirm it. The guy was gone to work. It was minus 30 that day, and he comes home, and his barn has been, his, his pen has been flooded. If you look at the video, if you look at the video, Len, you will see the hose marks. Huh? Who said that? Mr. Mr. Vachel said that, that it wasn't flooded when, that it wasn't muddy when he left? Is it his word? Those were his words. His words were that when he came home from work, he saw somebody leaving his property. He followed them. She ran into somebody's driveway, parked there, locked her doors, called the police. Then he noticed she had two calves of his. So he, he in turn called the police. She was charged with possession of stolen property. 
She kept saying, go, go, see the property, go, see the property. He gets back to his property and saw the damage. Now, I'm not stupid. I'm not born yesterday. That video clearly shows that that flood was done hours before the video because it is starting to freeze. As the video is being made, these cows are having a harder time walking in this because it's freezing. Now, if it had been like that on minus 30, it would have been solid muck. It would not have been draining off onto the snow that is outside the pen. You can literally see the muck running off. If it had been like that for weeks or days, it would have been frozen muck. They would have been walking on frozen muck, not mud and shit that's literally overflowing. While they're taking their video, it's overflowing and dripping down onto the snow that has fallen so that day, that is still that falling. So that's, uh, this is one side. No, it's and my you observation. Know, have you spoken, have you spoken, you know, in, in being fair on anything... Have I spoken to Nicole? Both, excuse me, both parties must be spoken to to be fair. They've never been spoken to. Suddenly it's they don't want to speak to me. They don't want to speak to me. They don't want to let me see for myself. They, I've asked Nicole many times to call me, to speak as adults. We have known each other for over 10 years. She refuses to even call me or email me or anything. Yet she's on Facebook. She's raising money. It's not like she's too dumb to know how to use an internet. She knows how well, to use the internet. Well, Susan Mans, I didn't have a number well, until just you, recently. Let me finish my sentence. It sounds like you have a personal dispute no. with Nicole. That's, that's, that's no, funny. I have admired Nicole. Yeah, I, I would like to finish what I'm saying. I did listen to you at great length. So, you no, know, you haven't, but go ahead. I used to call Susan Mans. I will. And see, you know, and see what her... Because I wasn't there. What I'm saying is that... You know, everybody, everybody involved, we're all animal people, right? We're all good animal people. The point is, I don't know if these people are going to end up in, in jail. They are animal people. Well, you know, if so Nicole... What, what, how does this help anybody, Sophie? Well, let me that? put it this way. If Nicole was to die tomorrow, get hit by a bus or have a stroke... Those animals would be in pathetic shape because there's nobody to take over. If she ends up being charged, if she ends up, well, it would help the animals because somebody would have to go in there and clean her place up and save those animals. I mean, I mean the investigation. What investigation? There is no investigation. Luc Vachon's barn is absolutely wonderful compared to a lot of others. She targeted him because she can't get the hay from his brother. And he thinks that she targeted the wrong house, that she really targeted his brother and went to the wrong address. He thinks that it was just a vendetta against his brother because she also put paint in his gas tank, the brother. So Luke does believe that it was a mistake on her part. There is no investigation because there's no cruelty, there's no animal abuse, there's no neglect. And let me tell you, that place is a palace compared to Tejas's barn. So if any animals need to be liberated, they need to be liberated from Tejas's place. She has no right going in there taking healthy animals who are being fed taken good care of, whether she feels that they're going to be chopped up for meat or not, that is a whole different issue. The issue of being a vegan, being an activist is one thing. To take a calf that's living in a barn in those conditions to bring to her place for him to die, the way these animals at her place are dying, did you see the rotting hen in the bag? Like seriously, did you look at the video? Don't tell me that I'm doing her harm.
But I did notice when I was there, he, well, I guess that's actually Rob that has to address it. Rob has actually pointed out on a post on Rick's page that the security cameras he installed are fake. There's no, but that's, anyway, that's not your issue, but it's on Rick's page. That, that should be removed with that. No! Why should it be removed? I mean, any Joe, any Joe Blow who looks at those pictures and those cameras sees there's no wire. They're plastic freaking cameras mounted on a pole. You don't have to be stupid. I've been to the ARN. They have cameras. They have wires. They have a security system. You know, why do people want to make believe stuff? She wants people to think there's cameras so people don't go on her property. She won't let people go on and see her property because of the horrendous situation. And people who hide behind this and close their eyes and protect one another, it is not a vendetta. It is a, for the animals. What I am doing is for these animals that are suffering at Nicole's place. And then she has the guts to make some kind of liberation video that fucked her up because she ended up getting caught and charged with possession of stolen animals. Let me tell you, if that video can prove that she stole these animals and she can get charged, she's not going to get jail time. Come on, we're in North America. She is charged with stealing two cows. She's going to get a fine. She's sitting on a bunch of money instead of putting it where it belongs. She can pay fines. She's always willing to sue everybody. She can put her money where it should go to the animals and not to suing people and if she gets caught if the police decide that this is evidence that somebody stole these calves with ill intent and they charge her with theft well be it she should pay the fine because that is wrong i don't care i have been involved in situations where you save animals but not to bring them to more horrible places and certainly not stealing animals that do not deserve to be put in harm's way she is taking calves out of a barn that is fully equipped and functional to slap them in her pig pen? Are you kidding me? What was her intention? She was going to hop them in the van and leave them there until she figures something out? That is not right. No animal activist should even condone this. So if you're going to liberate an animal that's going to be chopped up, do it the right way. Bring him to a safe place. Don't muck up his place to try and charge the other with, oh, look how they're abusing their animals. Take a look at your own backyard before you go stealing animals from another person's far farm okay, under well, the name. Well, do, what, uh, yeah, well, you know, uh, tell I, Sue, I tell Sue okay. instead of getting you involved and telling you to call me, she should have picked up the phone and called me herself. She's the one on that video. She has a problem. Instead of getting you, her friend, to call because you once bought me a fridge, she should have picked up the phone and said, hey, isn't that the girl that you bought a fridge to? Do you have her number? I want to speak to her and see if her son and I can talk. That's no, how no, adults... No, 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 I did it. Absolutely, she did not. She didn't know that I had made a, a donation to your, uh, your organization. But again, that's what I said. That was my way of letting you, remind you who mm -hmm. I am. Maybe you didn't know me from a hole on the wall. But anyway, um, you know what, Sophie, um, I'm withdrawing from this. Yeah, completely. that's the best uh, because... I, I, uh, what I do is I, uh, as, a, uh, as a volunteer, like everyone with the Ottawa Animal Defense League, I help coordinate the Ottawa Animal Defense League, and I'm withdrawing completely from all of this, uh, and I'm going to focus on the OEDL, and I'm out. So That's, it's just causing a lot of the stress in life. It should be dealt with with the people who are actually uh, involved. And I, I, try, I guess I try to mostly, I've been, tried to play uh, intermediary or, or, or resolve disputes, but it's not, uh, I'm withdrawing from that 100%. It's not getting anywhere, and my place is the OADL. So... That is what I'm going to focus on. Sounds good to me. You know, anybody who supports what's going on is going to be in our way anyway and is going to be a target in the sense that we are trying to expose the truth about this hoarding situation that's going on everywhere in Quebec with sanctuaries, with rescues and whatnot. So, um, all right. So I guess I'll let you go. And uh, it is duly noted, but the video will not be removed. Uh, nothing well, that's... So, I'm, I'm out of it, so that's not other people's affair. It's just, uh, it's just too much for me, and it's not, uh, no, I, 
think we'll focus on matters that affect the Ottawa Animal Defense League and uh, others involved in disputes that affect their organizations. They can address those with each other or however they're going to do that. So I am done with that. And um, I haven't spoken to you in a long time. How, how, are, you, how are you doing anyway? Oh, well, the rescue world is going downhill because all these hoarders and dog flippers who just rescue, 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 and flip and hoard all over the place. And so now everybody can just rescue their own dogs. So I'm full of debts and, you know, uh, no adoptions. But other than that, I'm doing good. I'm hanging in there, and I'm definitely working. I'm taking, you know, exposing what's going on. I'm taking well, a year off. Uh, no, no adoptions. You don't have people to adopt your dogs anymore? No, people don't want to pay money when they can go to the pound and get a, a dog out for 60 bucks that's going to be on death row. That's their big gain now, their reward. Oh, I saved the dog. And then what happens to these dogs? They can't deal with them, so they dump them with hoarders, or they call me and say, can you take a dog? I rescued. And I'm, yeah, it's really bad. People do not want to get dogs from real rescues. They're taking from hoarders who are selling cheap. It's a whole market now of making a buck off uh, rescue dogs. So people, everybody's a rescuer now. Didn't you notice that? Everybody's cross-posting on Facebook. This dog will die. People are making money. There are scams out the wazoo. And that's what I'm working on with my son this year, is exposing all the dog flippers, all the dog hoarders, all these people making a buck by just piling up animals under the name of rescue and exposing what a real rescue is. You put the money where the animals are, you put the money into the animals, and then you can make, you know, you can do a paint job or you can do this, you can do that, but first the money goes to the animals. Then whatever is left over goes to the rescue. But these people are doing it backwards. Everything goes to publicity, marketing, da 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 and no money gets put into the animals, so, yeah. But, uh, so how do you bring in, uh, I can ask, like you were bringing in some income from, from adoptions, how are you? How are you oh, I do a lot of grooming, I'm doing a lot of uh, working with uh, behavior, animal behavior, uh, okay. just, Good. you know, and, and Rick obviously his income from the internet company and whatnot, all his, uh, so no, I mean it's it's tough, but uh, the the rescue, the adoption money was never for me, it's not my salary, it's to put into the dogs. Right now I have three dogs whose teeth are really bad. I have one going in tomorrow, it's costing a thousand bucks, but they need their teeth done. I can't place these dogs like that, and I certainly won't keep them like that. They were rescued out of horrible situations. They need to be fixed up, and that's what I feel that Nicole has lost it because she no longer puts money into the animals. She doesn't care about the well-being. She just piles them up, and that to her is better than being slaughtered for meat or dying at, you know, puppy mills or whatnot. It's, she's got it all wrong now. You have to put the money into the animals. So, but, uh, yeah, I'm hanging in there. I'm doing all kinds of other things. And uh, But I've got to go because I have to bring a dog back to his foster home. The adoption didn't work out. Uh, he's afraid of traffic. He's afraid of everything. So he needs a lot of work. So I'm going to have to work with that dog before. Um, so, yeah, the foster home is going to be home around 11, 11, 15. So... Um, oh, okay, Jeffy. All right. Well, all right. Well, all, all the best with everything. All right. Thanks a lot. Take care, Lynn. All right. Okay, take care. Sir. Okay, bye-bye.